Hello, welcome to the channel where you find me among the best new sports cars of the year as we look to define what is Britain's best driver's car of 2023. This is the 35th annual running of this event in which we take the 10 best sports cars of the year plus last year's winner and pitch them against each other. That is the first thing to remember, they are all excellent, the best of the year, even the one that finishes last is great. We have five judges who each apportion a number of points to each car and over three days of testing on road and track, we have a winner. For previous winners, why not subscribe to Autocar and have full access to the 128 year history of this weekly magazine through our archive, which is all available at themagazineshop.com. Anyway, this year's runners and riders include the Alpine A110R, the CS version of the new BMW M3, and then a resto mod of Peugeot 205 GTI by Tolman Engineering. The Aerial Atom 4R, the Atom 4 it's based on was a two-time winner of this contest. The ProDrive P25, to which the phrase resto mod would be offensive because it's a lot more mod than it is resto. Lamborghini's Huracan Storato, the Honda Civic Type R hot hatchback. Not one, but two Porsche 911s, the Dakar and the GT3 RS, here in place of the GT3 that won this contest last year. The BMW M2, and last but not least, the Audi RS7. In this video, we're covering finishing positions 11 through to 6, with a top 5 coming in part 2. Now, if you want spoilers, you'll find them if you get the magazine. We'll begin, though, with that RS7. Right then, to the Audi RS7, which is the largest, heaviest car here, but also not the least brisk by any means. This is an intensely powerful car, it revs to sort of 6750, gets up there very fast. You can feel it move around and also you move around a bit in this, whoa, in this big seat. So just, it's not shy of falling into uh, a, a sort of slight bit of oversteer halfway around that long corner. It's got a good balance to it. Very grabby brakes. And the ability, it seems, yeah, it just sort of, it, it does slide mid corner. And the ability to, and willingness to do that. It's not a natural track car for heaven's sake, but you know, it does do lap times and lap time statistics. It had as an acceleration measurer, which is a car that looks prepared to do that sort of thing. It's not shy in just engaging the rear and sort of thinking about having a little slide. You don't feel much about it through the wheel. You don't know much about it through the seat until the car starts going because you're not sort of really hugged in these seats really tightly. Turns in well. Steer, then it goes, then it goes, then it goes, then it goes. Slightly clumsy, but it'll, you know, slip into a kind of big drifty, slidey thing. It's probably better when in the dry when you get some uh, some energy built up into the chassis and it all feels a bit tighter and everything. But it's not a track car. It's not built for these conditions. Nothing else here can take so many people in so much comfort from the point of view of a big lovable barge it's all right but um, typically with these things BMW does it slightly better and I think that's probably the case here too but you know wind it back relax and you make very quick not unenjoyable progress Remember, these are all great cars, so there is no shame in a big road car like the RS7 finishing 11th when track elements matter as much as they do, about half of the overall score. Onwards to another great road car and our favourite hot hatchback, certainly of the moment, perhaps of all time. This then is a Honda Civic Type R. Traditionally, sort of most powerful of the front wheel drive hot hatchbacks but also the most spectacular just one of the best of late of the big hatches it's very confidence inspiring straight away conditions at the moment are really poor and you know you first lap out and feel feel like you can sort of really lean on that front end 
really nice snappy gearbox, medium weight steering. I'm not getting loads through it, not getting loads back. There is um, some bite at the front and the rear just uh, will also move around a little bit. That's some trouble unsurprisingly putting all of its power down in second on the way out of a corner like that. It wants to move around. in a nice fashion actually, a nice predictable, well telegraphed fashion. It helps that the seats are terrific, they really hold you very well, so when the car moves around you instantly know what's going on because you move around with it, you don't slap around in the seat. It's a really important point I think actually, and one of the things about the other front wheel drive car here, which is the uh, Peugeot 205, which has been had the Tolman mods, if that had a more figure hugging seat, you might feel even more connected to it. Uh, than you do. Puts all of its power down in third, no problem. It will blip downshifts if you if you want it to. Um, not while I do it itself, really, but you know, it, it is there to help you out if you want. It's a very trustworthy car. Just starts to push into understeer here. Just get all the power out of third gear bend but you can predict really nicely, linearly, what it's going to do. Brake pedal is strong. It does flash up the hazards if you're sort of braking hard. I'd rather it didn't. Just give it a little lift halfway around that corner and it just engages the back of the car a little bit. It's a nice handling car, this, and it's an easy car to get on top of. Oh yeah, that's sort of really nice through there. That's a fourth gear mid RPM scorer, it's like 70 miles an hour, 65, 70 in these conditions. And even then you could just lean on it, feel what it's up to. No nonsense, no dramas, no theatrics, just a really well telegraphed, quick, enjoyable uh, hot hatchback. More enjoyable than the Peugeot? I don't know, it, I mean it depends. I love small lightweight cars to that end rather think the Peugeot has quite a lot going for it. I wouldn't have been surprised if the Civic finished higher here, but it is a heck of a competitive field this year. Performance cars seem to just get better and better. Next up is a car whose playfulness ought to make it excel in these conditions. It's the BMW M2, although it does come with one significant problem. And so to the BMW M2, which is a car that we might think these conditions rather lend itself to it's front engine rear wheel drive there's a lip to slip differential it's light it's well ish it's agile it's nimble if there is a problem let me just get this out of the way first i wonder if anybody from bmw has ever tried these seats which are these optional ones with a carbon fiber penis tray in right hand drive because the clutch is right in front of the center of the seat. The brake and throttle pedals are off to the right. So it, actually, as I move my this leg across, that's not so bad. Every time I want to press the clutch, that bit of the seat gets in the way. It's a stupid idea. There's stupid seats in a in, in a in an automatic BMW. In a manual, they are ridiculous. I can't believe anybody from BMW has ever tried them in right-hand drive because it's just ridiculous. However, that done, let's deal with the important bit so it's a little nudge of a little bit of understeer and then it will break into oversteer because it has a reasonable amount of power see what the balance is like the steering quite light the gear shift is a bmw manual gear shift which means it's reasonably positive it sort of drops itself home but you know there's a little bit of rubberiness to it. They're not the last world in manual gearboxes, but they are okay. It's got a rather nice engine. Very strong pull all the way through. You don't need to take it out in these conditions. It's nice to ride on the torque. And then there is a decent amount of power. You can make all the changes to the chassis, steering, all that sort of malarkey up on uh, the central touchscreen but also as well as the touchscreen you can control it via this which is actually really helpful because you don't want to be uh, wandering around at the touchscreen but actually on a straight as you go between gears you can just sort of reach down and go actually I'll tell you what I'll have 
is the chassis into uh, sport or comfort or whatever. And you could just feel for it without having to take your, your hands away from the wheel. So that is quite useful. It has got a nice balance. It is adjustable. It is approachable. It's not actually half as leery as I thought it might be. Let's see if I can deliberately provoke it. And there's still some traction control switched on here, so let's see if we can lose that completely. DSC is now off. It's got an M drift analyzer. You know what? Let's put it on. It's just for the giggles. Use only in appropriate places. Okay. The fact is, the fact that it's not all touchscreen, I've got this, means I can do that while I'm just sort of, you know, on a circuit, which is, which I like very much. Right. Actually, doing that has really sort of liberated that feeling. It still does in steady state least up to understeer but it means that it's much more there it is right but it means it's much more controllable once you get through that last drift three and a half stars you know okay thanks very much that's the uh that's that's the that's the safe road testers verdict three and a half stars nobody's going to be blown away nobody's going to be upset yeah three and a half stars that's okay that's the fine. Let's see if I can do a bit better than that. It's not a gear shift you want to rush too much because it does threaten to, you, know, you, you could select a wrong gear if you weren't careful. Here we go. Didn't even register that last one as a drift. I mean, it's a good car. Uh, it's a it's a it's a pleasing car. I think I'm. You would think it lends itself a bit to these conditions more than something like a GT3 RS or an Aerial Atom would do. But it's I think I prefer the way when we had a BMW M2 competition here in foul weather a couple of years ago few years ago five four or five years ago and I think I liked that much more than I like this this feels a uh, I don't know a bit heavier a bit bulkier a bit less I don't know a bit less able to to control all of its movements even though I've got the chassis in a, a sporty controlled fashion it just feels a little bit loose um, it's a good car it's a nicely balanced car is it the best car here? No. Even in conditions which kind of ought to suit it really well. I like it, but uh, I don't think it's going to be troubling the very top. But who knows? There are plenty of judges here. We'll see where we end up at the end of the day. From muscle-bound coupe to thoroughbred sports car, the Alpine A110R, the go-faster version of the car we love for its lightness and purity here over at HMS Autocar. So much so, in fact, that our editor-in-chief even owns one. Here is what the quicker version is like. So this is the Alpine A110R, which is the lighter, racier, more focused version of the A110, which we love. Um, it has the sad distinction of being the car that is on the most focused dry condition rubber of this entire test. I think it's come on uh, Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tyres, which are superb as we know in the dry, but um, not developed with you know wet circuits in mind. But we'll see. We'll see. They will, they will be impossible to get any heat into, but we'll see how they are. I love this car and I'm already enjoying you know just the immediacy of it I think it's a I think it's a terrific road car big patch of standing water there I think it's a terrific road car I am looking forward to it as a as a track car even if it's not necessarily going to show its best it's just struggling with putting its power down out of that second gear corner there so let's pop the ESC into off mode just has that sort of ease of ease of movement and energy behind it you know you come on the throttle you don't have to be flat on the throttle it just picks up and if you ride a motorbike you kind of know a little bit about you know what I mean is that is that 
the lack of inertia behind everything means that you know you could just oh god it's really i really like it a couple of colleagues have already driven it and they said oh it's such a shame it's on such you know it's on it's on such hard rubber that it won't generate any heat and it won't rip at all and that makes it really spiky i don't know why well, i mean it is picking up this it did pick up to wheel speed just then more quickly than it picks up road speed but the steering is delightful because the car doesn't weigh very much because the front end is lightly loaded it can be yeah okay it is a little bit not entirely uh, predictable the front end is is light um, even lighter on this one is it, which is running carbon fiber wheels which are an option so that there's just no mass behind stuff and that means that the the, the steering, although it is power assisted, you don't need loads of assistance to make it one light. And the more assistance you put into a rack, sometimes the less sort of road feel you can get through, uh, through to the rim. Because it can, and sometimes does, sort of over filter it. But this just has delicious, delicious steering. Just really lovely. I wonder if this is the nicest steering, the nicest power assisted steering of any road car at the moment. I'm not sure that's something you would say for standard A110. But this just gives a real, I mean, that does steer nicely, but this just has a real precision and road feel to it that those don't. And I am prepared to forgive the fact, yeah, so it pushes on into understeer a bit, then it pushes into oversteer quite quickly. It's not a car that is at home on a wet circuit, but I really enjoyed it on the road. I'm having quite a lot of fun on circuit, not going to take the sort of liberties that I would take in something with sort of big four wheel drive security like the 911 Dakar or that sort of front engine rear wheel drive, playful handling of, yeah, maybe not the BMW M2, but um, the rear drive M3, when you put the M3 into its rear drive mode. This doesn't, you know, it's this is not its natural environment, but a lot of this car's qualities still show through, and I hope it does rather well. In the dry, I suspect the Alpine A110R would have made more friends still and finished even higher. Next up is a car with four-wheel drive, the BMW M3 CS, although if you want, you can disable drive to the front and leave this performance saloon a purely rear drive experience. So then the BMW M3 CS, which is the Go Faster M3. A wobble. Right, let's put that into a manual mode. That's better. The current M3 is, as you know, four-wheel drive. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try four-wheel drive sport for a bit, and then I will put it into two-wheel drive as well, which you can do so you can disconnect the front, make it rear-wheel drive only. This is very changeable weather today. It's not raining right now, it's really windy, which means there's no water streaming across the track. It has sort of settled um, quite quickly, but it's still quite damp, it's still very damp. And it is by no means anything like a dry track, but that might, the conditions might, play into the M3's uh, strengths a bit because it's not streaming from water like it was earlier. Usually when we do this event, there is a reasonable amount of consistency between judges. You know, we kind of think that cars are what they are. However, I think the weather, the changeability of the weather, somebody might try a car when it's absolutely teeming with rain, not really get on with it. And then in conditions like this, you know, a few minutes later, it could change quite considerably. So we usually get lucky. We usually get really great weather up here, which is not always the case in North Wales, but we this year we've got we've got some rain so sorry we'll see what we you know. it's now got enough lateral grip uh, to just tip the car as you turn in on the brakes it's got enough momentum that it starts to come round and then it just makes that as you sort of power out it makes that noise as the sort of understeer kicks in you may have heard it there and it's sort of front wheels are understeering but it's kind of oversteering at the same sort of time it's just sort of falling sideways on modest amounts of power and it won't take any more power 
than we're already giving it. Really good steering, loads of feel, I think, you know, or sort of road feel. I, I feel like I know what, absolutely what's going on. Nice, consistent weight to it. Not unlike the BMW M4 GTS, which we had here a few years ago and divided company like you would not imagine. Some people loved it. I really enjoyed it. I know a couple of other drivers who really liked it. Loads of people really hated it. I'm going to pop this into two wheel drive mode. I'm not going to get it to assess my drifts because frankly the M2 was so rude about them earlier that I'm not interested. See what difference it makes to the balance. Well, not a lot. There's still quite a lot. Not a lot on the way in. There's still, um, you know, you, you, I'm not generating loads of heat in the tyres, so it's just sort of slipping into a, a steady state understeer. And then it's much happier on the way out in two wheel drive mode to oversteer than it was in four wheel drive mode. <laughs> but now I know what's coming, I will uh, look to accept it much more readily this time round. Just feel it thread through the fast stuff. Oh, there's the OBS flying. Um, you can just feel it there through the fast stuff. Ah, there's the understeer. Then comes the oversteer. The quicker corners, you just feel it just wanting to straighten itself on the power in a really pleasant fashion. It's got a really nice balance. very strong engine. I like this car. You, there is a particular driving style, I think, to get the best out of it in these conditions. And then if you don't adopt that, you either get quite a lot of understeer or... Right, here we go. Here we go. You have to beat through the understeer in quite a big way and stay stay beating through it as well to get into the oversteer into the realm of where it's going yeah the front's now doing what you want and you're playing games with the rear it's much easier in the dry to get into that state because you can work up some heat in the front tires but that state is attainable in these conditions but it's just hard to get to and it's hard to stay in it and it's but there is a really well balanced car in there somewhere it's harder to find it in these conditions but it's a good driver's car and actually even if you're not messing around with it it's it's rewarding just a little bit sort of clumsy with what it's doing at times I don't think it will divide opinion quite like the M4 GTS did, but I think there will be people who really like it and those who don't like it quite as much at all. On from the M3 then to something rather more purposeful. The ProDrive P25 has been rather unfairly called a Subaru 22B Resto mod. Now the body might look the same as that, but that underestimates what this car is all about. It's a way, way more serious car than any previous road-going Subaru. It is almost a bespoke rally car, as befits being made by ProDrive, I suppose. It's brilliant and fabulous, but as we'll see, incredibly full-on as well. By pulling away in a ProDrive P25 is... get a sense of what this car is about. It's got a sort of bespoke carbon pedal assembly. The clutch is remote effectively. It's a digital electronic clutch. So there's no actual sort of bite point. The car just starts moving and you wind it off. The brakes are unassisted. It graunches away. I get one big panel and I pull towards me to change up. <laughs> and push to change down. Not to put too fine a point on it, this is a car that is not interested in doing stuff except going really fast forwards 
and then stopping really quickly. It's not interested in anything in the middle. It is an absurd piece of kit. It's not, it's not a Subaru Resto mod in any normal sense of the word. It's basically a WRC car in very limited road spec numbers. You can drive it on the road, and I have driven it on the road, but it just spends most of its time uninterested in the things that you would like to do with it unless you're just going flat out. The road it wants to be on is a one-way special stage with no other traffic. So what's it like? Well, flipping <laughs> loud, inside and out. The weather has just turned abysmal and it's quite neutral, you can lean up against it. Doesn't like coming on, a, on and off the throttle, you're either on it or you're not. Let's put it in Sport Plus, now it gets even angrier. There's some sort of anti-lag malarkey going on, it doesn't like on the throttle at all. Oh no, good grief. And then you get up to a certain speed and there's so much wind noise and everything else as well. It's so raw, this car. It is unbelievable. And I suppose if you're a rally driver, you, you don't mind a bit of slip in the tyres, so you would be on confident or nearly full throttle all the time. Let's push that button. That puts it in sport. Sport. Let's push it again. That puts it in road mode, which winds everything back a little, but it's still a very angry machine that really just wants to be driven hard. Even if you're on, you know, the public road on hard throttle, it's not really happy. It's whining away. It wants to be pushed harder and harder and harder. And then there are the lovely things about the fact that it's on a Subaru of this era, shape and size. Visibility is very good. It's quite compact. It's got a very simple, clean interior. I mean, it doesn't have the sort of visual quality of a modern supercar. You know, it feels bespoke and made in a sort of very functional fashion. If the road out of your gate is one way up to your favorite coffee stop, and it is like a, a special Corsican special stage. I imagine you'll think this car is the best thing since sliced bread. It's quite hard work everywhere, but oh my goodness, get it in the right spot. There's nothing like it here or anywhere else on the road today. It is mind, mind blowing. So 11th to 6th place takes us to just over halfway in the countdown for Britain's best driver's car of 2023. Next will be the top 5, which of the Ariel Atom, the two Porsche 911s, the Lamborghini or the Peugeot 205 Resto mod will take the top spot. Well, if you subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications, we'll tell you as soon as it appears. Meantime, join us over at autocar.co.uk and or at themagazineshop.com. We are on all the socials. I'm on Instagram at Automatic Transmission, two Ts. And you can find the Autocar My Week in Cars podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Until then, see you next time.